Hello everyone, welcome back to Dentistry Made Easy. So the topic that we are going to discuss about in today's video is known as composition of x-ray film. Now this is a very short topic but at the same time it is a very important short answer question. You know exactly what the film is. Film is basically where the image is formed. So when you are exposing the patient to the radiation, so whatever the image you want, it is formed on the film, on the x-ray film. Now why it is formed? Because obviously there is something in this x-ray film that is helping in the formation of the image. So we are going to see about that something which is helping in the formation of image. So the components of x-ray films are, so there are four components. First one is known as super coat. The next is the emulsion due to which exactly the image is formed on the x-ray film. The third is the adhesive. Adhesive as the name says, it is adhering the other components of the film and the fourth component is known as the film base so we are going to see each of this component in depth first we are going to see about the super coat so over here the first layer which is seen on the film is known as the super coat or you can say the outermost layer is the super coat which is nothing but a protective layer so the outermost layer is your super coat so it is going to protect the other layers of the film so it is a protective transparent non-abrasive layer which is present over the emulsion so first layer that we have seen is your super coat the next layer that you have under the super coat is known as emulsion so over here what exactly super coat is it is a protective layer it is transparent, it is non-abrasive. That means whatever you do to this layer, it is not going to get abraded. And this is a layer which is present over the emulsion. So this super coat, it serves as a barrier from damage by the mechanical handling. So mechanical handling can be if for example, you are scratching the film or if the film gets contaminated or if there is a pressure from the rollers during the automatic processing so we are going to see what exactly automatic processing is. So in all these cases, your film is going to get protected with this super coat. So this is nothing but it is the additional layer of gelatin which is going to serve as a protective barrier. So this is your first and the foremost or the outermost layer which is known as a super coat. The next layer is known as emulsion. So the emulsion layer, it is nothing but the layer which is radiation and light sensitive layer now as i said there's something in the film which is helping in the image formation so that something is nothing but your emulsion layer so emulsion is basically coated on the both side of the base so over here is your adhesive layer and the base and you have this emulsion on both side of the base so this is the center most like layer of your film that is the base and you have emulsion on both side of it so it is like a double emulsion film so this emulsion layer it contains silver bromide crystals which is suspended in gelatin so over here this is like the gelatin layer which is having silver bromide crystal so this silver bromide crystal is only going to help you for the image formation that means the emulsion layer it is photosensitive to visible light and x-rays and the films which are exposed to the x-rays they are usually known as direct exposure film this emulsion layer it consists of silver halide crystals and the gelatin matrix as i said this matrix is known as the gelatin matrix and you have the crystals of silver halide into it so the silver halide crystals are nothing but they are the silver bromide and the silver iodide crystals so silver bromide crystals they are present like around 80 to 99 percent and very less amount of silver iodide crystals are present in the silver halide crystals so the mean diameter of these crystals is it is 0 0.70 to 0 0.75 millimeter so the presence of the silver iodide crystals it adds greatly to the sensitivity of the film emulsion the next component of this emulsion layer is the gelatin matrix so what this gelatin matrix is doing so basically it is going to support your silver halide crystals so this is your matrix and it is going to support this silver halide crystals so this gelatin is made from the cattle's bone and it helps to keep the silver grains evenly dispersed 
so during the processing the gelatin it absorbs the processing solution and it helps to allow the chemicals to react with the crystals which in turn is going to help in the formation of the image so this is the next layer that is your emulsion layer which contains this silver halide crystals which are photosensitive to x rays due to which you get the image the next layer is the adhesive layer now over here this thin layer which you can see in purple color is the adhesive layer adhesive as the name says it adheres the layers together so adhesive is nothing but it is a thin adhesive material on both side of the base so this center most like layer of the film is the base so you have adhesive on both side of it and it helps in the good adhesion between the emulsion and the base so you can see over here so this is the adhesive layer which is present between the emulsion and the base so it is going to adhere these two layers now the next uh, layer of the extra film is known as the film base so film base is a transparent supporting material upon which the emulsion is coated so this film base it is composed of polyethylene terephthalate or another like composition for this film base can be cellulose triacetate so this cellulose triacetate it was introduced by george eastman in 1924 so he said that instead of using polyethylene you can use cellulose triacetate so this film base is usually 0.2 mm thick that means it is like around 0.007 inches so the thickness of this particular layer is 0.2 mm thick what are the requirements of the film base so the first requirement is it should have bluish tint now why for the ease of viewing if you have some color so it becomes very easy to view the film and it also prevents eye straining the next is it should be flexible that means you should be able to handle the film easily next like requirement of the film base is it should have good support like why because you have a very like fragile layer it is your emulsion layer support this very fragile layer the film base it should be supportive enough the next requirement is it should be dimensionally stable that means it shouldn't change its size or shape while you're going through the processing or when you exactly are using this film the next requirement of the film base is it should be inert why because now in this the emulsion it has this sensitometric property so if your base is not inert so your emulsion layer or the property of sensitometry it will be affected so you don't want to get it affected because the image is only going to form because of this emulsion layer so your film base is going to help for that and the next requirement is it should be translucent so that it does not cause any pattern like image in the resultant radiograph now there's one more important point that you can say or a mcq type of question is the film it is known as safe film if the base is made up of polyester as it is not easily inflammable and it is more resistant to wrapping now we have seen about the latent image formation in one of the videos so how that latent image is formed now if you go and see that video it becomes very easy like why exactly it is forming now in the next video we are going to see about the processing of the x-ray film so this was all about the composition of the x-ray film i hope you found this video helpful and if you did then please like comment share and do subscribe to my channel thank you so much